Hi there! Uh, today we're going to be showing you how to use the UK testing protocol uh, using the Water Rangers test kit. The first thing you want to do is get out your notepad. Um, you can also use our iOS app or the uh, website version at app.waterrangers.ca to record your data right there. But today I'm going to use the notepad. So you're first going to note the date and time the body of water and the location name. So this is the River Way, and this location is Alice Meadow. So noting that down, and then having the GPS location. We're then going to do the weather yesterday and the weather now. It's really important that we note net weather because a lot of water issues are related to weather. Uh, things like erosion are very much related to uh, weather events like rain. Okay, and the first, Thing we're looking at is our visual assessment. What do you see? What do you smell? Um, how high is the water compared to normal? What's the flow rate? What's the color of the water? You're going to note all of that down in your notebook. Um, there's some really great prompts on the website version um, that goes through looking for how natural the shoreline is, if you notice any animals, those sorts of things. So really, really doing a, a visual analysis of your location. As you come back to the same location, you're really going to get to know what's normal for it. What kind of smells are normal for it? What's the water level? What's the color? Um, so really training your eyes to learn more about your local waterway. Okay, so we haven't even got to the water. We've already recorded a lot of things, um, but really important, the context. Um, we're going to now be getting out our thermometer and this is to record air temperature. Now you can hang this in a tree in the shade. You want it at least a meter above the ground um, and you want to let it uh, wait for about five minutes. Please don't put it on your body or um, in the sun as that's going to affect the temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and hang that up and don't forget it. And then I'll go collect that at the end of my test. Now, get out your sample cup and your reacher stick. So you may have this or you may have a newer version, but this is a device to help you reach the water safely. So you can attach the cup like this and then you can extend. Always make sure you test at the same location. And then I'm going to take my sample. First, rinse your cup three times in the water that you're going to be testing. This makes sure if you have any, uh, you know, sunscreen on your hands that your sample won't be contaminated. And then I'm going to reach down 10 to 15 centimeters. 15 centimeters is optimal, but note the depth of your water. If it's less than 15 centimeters, it's more important that you're not scraping the bottom. So I can reach down about 15 centimeters here and grab my sample. All right, so you can take the sample off or you can leave it on. I always recommend that you test with a friend. And the reason is that a lot of this recording and doing this, you know, it really does take four hands. The first test we're going to be doing is our conductivity meter. Um, and temperature. And I'm going to press the top button once, just lightly once. It's going to cycle through and then you're going to notice um, two sets of numbers. We're going to put that right in the water, swish it around. The top number is your conductivity reading, which is anything that conducts electricity in water. So uh, salts, minerals, um, anything like that and every body of water has its own normal level so you have things like distilled water which would be about zero but natural water bodies will have things like limestone and soil and all sorts that are going to have its natural level go up so the top number there is 264 and we measure in micro siemens per centimeter that's that us at the top there you can see right there 
if you notice a decimal place, that means that you, your reading has gone over a thousand and it's going to change the unit there to MS. And just as you record that, just make sure that you record, so it might say like 1.32, you're gonna record 1,320. But in this case, it's below a thousand. So we're just gonna have 263 micro siemens per centimeter, that US per centimeter. The bottom number is your water temperature, 7.4. So we'll go ahead and record those in our notepad. The last step is to turn off your conductivity meter. Press the bottom button or the top button once and that's it. So our next test is to do our phosphates and nitrates. Um, these are our nutrient tests. So make sure you have dry hands you don't want to get any moisture in these bags. Take out your phosphate test first. You'll see it's got the blue um, front of the bag. And it's got a little pin here that you pull out. Be a bit tricky. There you go. Make sure you put that in your little garbage bag that's in your bag. And then I'm going to use two thumbs, long thumbs, to squish the air out of there. And then I'm going to dip it in my water and it's gonna suck in the water. And you want it to be about half full. A lot of people find this test quite tricky the first time. And what I suggest you do is you take an old tube that you've used already and you go home and practice without, um, without the, the proper reagent in it. So now we're going to set our timer for five minutes. Yep. So the phosphate test takes five minutes and our nitrate test takes three minutes. So what I usually do is I wait two minutes and then I do my nitrate test and then I can compare both uh, values at the end. Again, dry hands, you want to take out a sample, uh, a, a tube, remove the pin, two thumbs into the water, let go, and then we'll invert it. And now after uh, three minutes, we'll compare our results. So take out your comparison charts and if you're unsure which of your tubes is the correct one, there is a little PO4 at the bottom here of the uh, phosphates and uh, an NO3 here at the bottom of the, the nitrates. But you will probably notice that the nitrate is much pinker than the phosphates. And especially in our case, you're going to look here and you're going to see that the phosphates are pretty much below detection. So I would say that's below uh, 0 0.02. So I would probably record that as zero. Um, if you find that it's in between, then you can rep record the halfway point between. So let's compare now our nitrates. So I like to start at the bottom and slide up until I find where my match point is. And I believe that that would be probably between two and five. So this is another point where it's really great to test with a friend. Um, make sure that you both compare it and then you need to make sure that you agree. And it's gonna make you take the time to do your comparison. Okay, you're gonna put these little tubes here. You have a little envelope here. When you get home, you can squeeze the liquid out into your sink and these can be recycled but I would encourage you to keep some of these so that you can train new volunteers with the the ones that have been used okay so go ahead and put those in your little recycling bag the last test we have is with our test strips now again dry hands open the lid shake out one strip Grab it. 
what I'm going to do, do me, I'm going to lift it up. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to dip it in for two seconds and then out. So one, two, out. Okay. Now we're going to compare our results. So again, we're going to slide over the values. So we see the chlorine, definitely zero, which is what we'd hope it would be. The pH looks like it's between 6.4 and 6.8. So we take the absolute center, which was 6.6. .6. Alkalinity is zero and hardness probably between zero and 100. So I will record 50. Now, as you're testing, you're going to learn that every body of water in every spot has its own normal. And there's a relationship between these, uh, these, these test results. We had that lower conductivity level. We also had a lower pH, alkalinity, and hardness level. As we go up the same river, for example, um, the conductivity goes up, the pH goes up, the alkalinity and the hardness all go up as more tributaries contribute uh, different minerals into it. And what's really cool about this river is it has two branches and the other branch has a, a fundamentally different chemistry to it. So we're really learning a lot by doing these chemistry tests. We're going to take our test strip and put it in our bag for recycling when we go home. Make sure we record everything in our notepad. Dry off our reacher stick. and pack up our bag. So in your test kit, you also have a guide and it has more information about how to do this entire protocol, including what's normal levels. Um, but the best way for you to understand the river is to go to the river and get involved in testing. Um, the Riverway Trust, Zero Guilford, and lots of other groups um, in this area of the UK are working together to get monitoring and, and to learn more. So if you do want to get involved, please get in touch with uh, any of the groups that are uh, listed on this page. All right, we're gonna pack up our kit. We're gonna put our water back in the river. We're gonna make sure that we leave the place better than we found it. Um, if you notice any rubbish, pick that up. Um, we're gonna dry off our sample cup with a little towel. And you may want to wash this uh, after your testing sessions. Make sure your reacher stick is all dried. And how I like to pack it is I put the sample cup in first. I put the test strips in the sample cup. Then I can pack the conductivity meter and reacher stick on the left here. Then on this side, I have my notepad, my rubbish bag, my comparison charts, and my notepad here, pen, and then my nutrients. I usually put one on one side and one on the other. You can pack it however you like. That's the way I do it. And that's it. Happy testing.